What's up you amazing hackers, hope you're all doing well today. So we have a new episode for you about directory brute forcing because that's pretty much gold mining, but not a lot of people do it correctly. So I'm going to tell you why and how. There are a few things about why you would do directory brute forcing. First of all, I would like to start off with number one. Uh, you can of course look for hidden folders, which is really important because finding hidden folders is of course something you want to do. You can find some stuff that's available to you if you're not authenticated. You can find some stuff that not, that's not available on the main website. Maybe some FTP directories, who knows, that kind of stuff. So that's an obvious reason, but there's also a second reason I would like to tell you guys about. And that's the finding hidden unprotected uh, finding unprotected hidden folders which is a really important one we'll get into that a little bit later but it basically means that you can find folders like for example if you have a login portal you can get some fo folders for uh, that login portal and maybe like uh, most of those folders might be protected and you get a 403 as a response if you try to get, do a get request to them but there might be one or two folders to give you a 200 and there might be some really valuable information in that so really advise you guys of course to do directory brute forcing which most of you guys are probably already doing now let's get right into the watch shall we i have three points for that first of all you can really brute force login pages that's something i would really recommend so if you have a login page like i said before do your brute forcing properly and see if you can not find any folders that are unprotected because those are usually the ones that contain juicy information now of course you can also brute force any main page which would be number two brute forcing main pages this is something that everybody should do but doing it correctly is another thing and then of course there's also number three which not a lot of people do and which not a lot of people know about is you can do an nmap scan on that uh, target and if you find for example port 80 open and port 443 open you should do a directory brute force on both of those ports because even though the port 80 might redirect you to the port 443 there might be some stuff on port 80 that doesn't redirect you and actually has some valuable information in it so that's why I always recommend to uh, brute force both port 443 and port 80. Now, another thing I would highly recommend is seeing if you can find any other web servers on other ports running. For example, I had this target and it had multiple, uh, multiple web servers running on multiple ports, like port 8000 had something running, port 5000 had something running. And I brute forced all of those because there was some interesting information i haven't been able to do anything useful with that information yet but i sure as hell noted it down you guys can be sure about that so um let's get on to the number let's get on to the next one i mean sorry guys the how because this is super super important directory brute forcing is a, an art in and of itself you can spend years studying it but what i highly recommend of course is People have asked me to make a video about which scanner to use. There are so many out there. I'm not going to make a video about that because Jason Haddix did a great comparison for that. But what I can tell you guys is that you need to use whatever tool you feel comfortable with using. As long as it's written in Go or multi-threaded, as long as it's fast enough, you, sh you should be able to use any tool that you want. The tool is not what makes or breaks your directory brute forcing. Tools actually matter very little in brute forcing directories. What matters most is what word list you use. And that's something that not a lot of people do right. They might just do the, the, the Dirt Buster word list or like the, the word list that comes default with Burp Pro. But I would highly recommend that you make your own word lists using Cool. You guys know Cool, C-E-W-L. Cool is a pretty good program, it's pretty cool. <laughs> So uh, what it does is it spiders your website and it grabs some keywords. Say for example that I send cool to the website of my target uh, and I tell it to grab every single word that ha that's longer than five characters. I can use those words in my directory brute forcing as well. If say for example I found some Jenkins stuff, I'm going to go specifically to a Jenkins word list and I'm going to brute force that stuff. Uh, Whatever is on my endpoint, I'm going to fine tune my directory word list to whatever I need because that's really, really important. And that's where most of you guys, if, sorry if, I, if you don't, please uh, correct me if I'm wrong. 
but this is where most people go wrong. They, they just use a standard word list or they try to use the biggest word list possible, but giant word lists slow you down. I know I'm talking a lot about this, guys, but it's super important that you pick the right one. Pick a small one, pick one that's good for your target, and you're going to get much better results. And you can make your own directory word lists, why not? It's super simple and you would be surprised what kind of crap you find on those directories. Now, uh, that was it for the directory brute forcing. I would really like, like to know what you guys think about directory brute forcing. What tools would you recommend? Thank you guys for watching. I really enjoyed making this video because I had to do some research as well and I really enjoyed doing that. So thank you for that. I hope I'll see you in the next one. Bye everybody.